Right, let's start with the most obvious thing about three-point lighting. You're gonna need one, two, three, li three lights to make this work. And they don't have to be the same light. I'm actually using different lights. These are all from Flashpoint, they're all from Adorama, but they're different flashes because we're gonna use them in a variety of different ways. The key is three points of light in your scene. They're gonna hit your background or your model in different ways to create different looks. And the easiest way to explain it is just to get going. So I think we should get a light set. Actually, let's get three lights set. Let's get a model in, let's get shooting. Where's my light stand? <laughs> To help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe's gonna be the model for this photo session. And before we start, it's worth mentioning one thing. There are no set rules when it comes to three-point lighting, but there are some fairly firm guidelines. And of course, it's all gonna start with my camera settings. So I've gone with a shutter speed of 250th of a second. I've got F8 for a reasonable depth of field and ISO 200. And no flash gives me this, no picture. The one thing you're definitely gonna have is a key light. So this is gonna be my key light. I've gone for a nice large soft box with a Flashpoint Explore 300 as my light source. And I've placed it a fair distance away from Chloe, at least in my small home studio. This isn't gonna be where it stays, but let me show you what we get. This is a starting point. So this is our first light of three. And from where it is here, it is perfectly Okay, there's nothing wrong with this lighting position whatsoever. But for the other three lights to really be seen in this tutorial and this lighting setup, I'm gonna move this light a lot closer. So the light is now quite a lot closer. It's changed my flash power. We were at half power back here. We're now at one eighth power, which is good news for my flash. And it's good news for the photo as well, because it's gonna create a little bit more shadow on Chloe's face. Let's take a test photo, here we go. And sure enough, we've got shadow on the opposite side of the flash, which is where we're gonna see the extra lights. But as another point to note, the background is also just slightly darker and we'll deal with that in a bit. So for the second light of our three light setup, I've got a backlight, also known as a hair light, because it is a light that is at the back of Chloe and it's gonna light Chloe's hair. So the clue is in the name, but in fact, it's not gonna be just Chloe's hair. It's also gonna do her neckline, her shoulders, her arms. It's gonna put a rim of light that is on the opposite side to our key light, which is why I was so keen to get the shadows in the first place. Now, how bright should that light be? I've gone with two stops underneath my key light. So that is metering at F4. You can do it by trial and error and just see what you like. I've also got it in a strip box. You can use any light modifier or no light modifier. As I said at the beginning, there are some firm guidelines, but you can make it your own. Let's test this out, see how it looks. Okay, Chloe, here we go. So this is the result of just that backlight. It puts that little rim of light around Chloe and is doing exactly what it's designed to do, separating her out from the darker background. So if I turn the key light back on and mix the two lights together, this is what it looks like. We've got key light on Chloe's face. We've got the backlight on her hair, her shoulders and her neck. All in all, this is working really well, except for that background, which is just a little bit dark and plain. So the third light on my three-point lighting is gonna be this one. Now you might have noticed I've actually used different lights. I've got an Explore 300, I've got an Evolve 200, and this is an Explore 100. You don't have to do this, it just makes life a little bit easier when you're looking at the, the video description to work out which light is which. So the Evolve 100 is gonna be my background light. It's actually got the lightest job to do. It only has to put a bit of light on the background here. But how much light does that want to put out? Well, once again, I've turned the other two lights off. I'm not gonna meter this one, I'm gonna do it by eye. And just see what the background light on its own is doing. Here we go. That is, I think, a little bit on the bright side. So I'm actually gonna take it down two stops. And if I go from 1 16th power, 1 32nd to 1 64th, and I think that's gonna be just enough light because when I turn on the other lights and combine the three, it looks like this. 
just that nice little halo behind Chloe's shoulders to separate her out. We've still got that hair light and we've still got the key light. And that is our first way of doing three point lighting set up. So I think we should take a few photos like this. Chloe, are you ready? Okay, away we go. There's always some post-processing with the final images, but getting the lighting right in camera really minimizes that. In fact, really all I did with these images is apply a little bit of a, a color toning effect to them. So as an alternative way of doing three-point lighting, I've changed the, the background light. So no longer is it a background light, it's actually going to be a fill light. The hair light and the key light are going to be exactly in the same position. But the idea with this is it's going to give a softer look to the lighting on Chloe's face. But the position of this fill light is kind of important. Now I've got a fairly small softbox and the positioning of this is gonna be fairly central just off to the side, something like that. And the height is gonna be slightly higher than Chloe's eye line when I'm looking at it. In fact, that's how I've set all of my lights. When I look underneath, I can see Chloe underneath my lights. There's a really important reason I've gone with this setup and I'm gonna show you by just taking a picture with this light firing on its own. So I've set this up so it is two stops underneath the power of the key light. Again, that's something you might want to change, but this is how it looks. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And what I'm looking at here isn't the quality of the light or the brightness or anything. I'm actually looking at the shadows that it's creating. What I don't want is for my fill light to create hard shadows. We only want shadows to come from the key light. The fill light is there just to soften those shadows down a little bit. So if you're seeing really hard edge shadows, you either need to get a bigger light source or maybe bounce it off a wall or a ceiling just to give you that softer look. It's just gotta be a fill light, remember. Okay, let's turn the other lights on and see how this goes. It still has that three point look, but as I said, it is much softer on Chloe's face than it was before. The only thing I'm less keen on is the background, which with the background we're using today is now looking just a little bit dark. So what I've done is I've positioned the key light right back where we started. Now remember, right at the beginning, I wasn't keen on the lighting position here because it gave more light on the background than I actually wanted. And that's what happens. If you have a light that's more distant, the inverse square law kicks in and it's gonna light not only Chloe, but also the background. And in this case, where there is no actual background light, it's a three point lighting setup, then it's gotta do two jobs. So here's how it looks. We have that great soft lighting on Chloe. We have a brighter background. All in all, this is a nice, safe, clean lighting setup. Perfect for corporate headshots or anything where you want a softer look. And I think that's everything set up. So Chloe, if you're ready, let's take a few photos like this. Here we go. light is putting really even light on the background and that might work for many situations but when it came to the post processing on the final images I put just a subtle vignette on that background just to help to define it just a bit more You'll find three-point lighting used 
all over the place, and not just in stills photography, in video it's very popular as an interview lighting. And although there's no set rules on how to do it, you will find that basic combination of three lights is used in a variety of different ways by so many different photographers. It's pretty much everywhere. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave us a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And if you haven't already done so, I bet you have, but if you haven't done so, click on that subscribe button. Not physically that button, it's the one at the bottom of the video where you leave your comments. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.